the project starts with uh, loading the input data. In this case, we are going to load a uh, subset of a point cloud. So it's a very small subset. Um, since um, I don't want you to wait for minutes and minutes until the uh, processes um, finish. So um, once we load the uh, um, point cloud in the Phoenix, the fir well, first question we have to answer is with which resolution we want to rasterize it. So all, always we load point clouds in the Phoenix, the data is rasterized. And depending on the point density, um, an appropriate uh, resolution has to be um, selected. In this case, we will select uh, one meter. You see here, we only load point cloud, and everything seems fine in the project information window, so we will click OK. And what we see here is the intensity information of the points. So when we load the point cloud into the Phineas, the first rasterization which is performed automatically is always the intensity. So, and now I have prepared a small rule set which classifies ground or ground in this image and I will um, load it in the process tree window. So now we see here the major steps in the rule set and we will look into detail for in each of these main steps. So you see here the, main, the first step in this rule set is to create some more rasters out of the out of the point cloud. I said I said before that um, the first rasterization is the intensity, but in our case for um, finding ground and not ground, um, the elevation is um, um, the uh, data we need to represent here. So by using this um, algorithm named data file converter, we can rasterize the uh, point cloud in a very um, in a, in a very sophisticated way, we can select here the point cloud we want to rasterize. In this case, we only have one. And here you can select which information do you want the points to represent. You can select between elevation, intensity, class, if there is a classification in the point cloud, and number of regions. In this case, we will select um, the elevation. And then we can um, further filter with the uh, uh, point um, return. So we can select between first, last, and uh, or all of them. And then in case we, for one pixel we have more than one points, uh, we can select um, which information do we um, take from all the points. In this case, we are going to take the highest elevation. You can also select between the average, minimum, medium, or most frequent value. So this process, when we execute it, will generate a new raster file representing the um, elevation of the first return of our LiDAR point cloud. Execute it. And now if I open the uh, edit image layer mixing window, you see here that two images are contained in my project. So the first one we already know is the intensity, and the second one which I created right now is the elevation. So you see here very nicely, you can already identify in this image the buildings and the trees, and you can also see some holes there. So first of all, if you have to remember, remember the presentation from before, I say the first step will be the um, um, filtering of the points here yeah, to take only the last return. So uh, I want to show you now how I can modify the process I showed you before to change the return combination. So in this case, this is exactly the same I had before, but I just have modified here the parameter first and I replace it by last. So this will now create similar raster, but taking into account only the last uh, returns. Let's execute it. So you see now a new file has been created. So now we have the elevation first, and I switch now to the elevation last. So you already see here if I tweak between both images, 
that the buildings remain with the same elevation approximately and the vegetation almost disappears. But we still have some vegetation points here that, we're, that we want to get rid of in the crown not crown classification. So, and here I can also show you how other type of images can be created, like for example the number of returns. So this raster represents the number of returns, so we have a value of one for uh, pixels in which um, only uh, one return was acquired and values of three and two in the uh, vegetation mode. So we could actually also use this image to directly classify the vegetation, but we are going to do it um, using the elevation. So first step after we rasterize images is to fill those holes with meaningful information. And uh, this is done because uh, the segmentation and other processes in the finance need homogeneous data to get um, uh, good results. So um, we have here a small uh, customized algorithm which is actually available in the cognition community. And this um, customized algorithm will uh, fill the um, holes with meaningful data. So we can see here which parameters we have. So you can, in this customized algorithm, select which image do you want to fill in with data and how many iterations. And the iterations parameter set up how uh, um, big is the uh, buffer that is going to be created out of the information. So with it, we can set up how big are the holes that we want to fill in with, uh, with meaningful information. So in this case, we are going to execute this uh, process for the elevation uh, last image, which is the, the only one that is used, used afterwards in the process. Let's take a look at the parameters, so it looks fine. So we are going to fill in the elevation last with uh, three iterations. This would be enough three iterations to fill in the objects of this size here. So let's execute it and see what happens. So you see now the new image that has been created. And this looks like much better than the one before. So now we can apply here segmentations and other um, DVE cognition um, filters that need uh, homogeneous data. So once we have created our uh, raster, we uh, continue finding the edges in this raster. So the assumption here is that um, buildings and trees or other type of air vegetation are surrounded by um, strong edges. So let's see what happens after we execute that. So here we use a um, uh, uh, min-max filter, which is available in the uh, standard recognition installation. And with it, we identify edges. And then we basically classify and segment the edges using the multi segmentation, which is also available in the, the standard cognition installation. So if we execute, module, you see here in red very nicely all the buildings surrounded by these red classified objects and also some smaller objects which are in many cases leftovers from the uh, vegetation. 